This week, you could win one of three bundles for the Silver Bayonet. Winners will be chosen from OnTabletop.com, YouTube, and the Cop of Games members. Hello everyone and welcome to Three Colours Up. In this one we're going to be painting Marseille Lupul, Lupus Lupul, from the Silver Bayonet range. And this is the first 3CU I've done since if you guys seen the XLBS where we talked to Tommy Soul. And um, I kind of focus a little bit more on one of his steps, making the consistency and setting the, the brush right. So I play a little bit more with what I'm doing, so hopefully this video should be a little bit better than my previous ones, you know, learn slow baby steps. But um, yeah, anyway, lovely model to paint. So let's get down to the table and show you how. So to get started on Marseille, he's been primed with um, Citadel Grey Sear. And what we're gonna be doing first is some base coating. So the base coats are going to basically be red for most of the clothing, uh, black for the cape. And then he has this little bit here along with the drape, um, tabard, don't know. Uh, that's going to go black and then we have this pelt up here which is going to have to go a brown but we're going to thin that down. So I want to start with the red and for the base coat we're going to go with Citadel Corn Red. So let's just crack that open, get my brush that has been dipped in some water and then I'm going to put that out onto my palette here. And what I'm going to do is just thin it a little bit with an extra drop of water. In fact, even now that feels a little too thin. So I'm just gonna take a little bit more out of the pot and add that in, swizz it around a little bit. Looks like we've got a good coat there. And we're just gonna start base coating the cloth that needs to go red. So you just take a bit more off the brush there. Starting to learn consistencies thanks to um, Tommy Soul. <laughs> um, what, what an inspirational guy to talk to. So this is me now starting to try and put into practice some of the stuff we discussed on that recent XLBS. With the red down, it's now time to move on to the black. I think our red is looking quite tidy there. So for the blacks, we're going to be going with the contrast paint, Black Legion. Always a good solid black color, this goes very well over a lighter sort of um, base coat. So again, we're going to take a little bit of that and put it onto my palette there. In fact, maybe just a little bit too much. Just dampen the brush to thin it out a little bit. And what we need to cover with this is this piece here, this piece here, which is all cloth, and then the back, the inner side of the cape and the back of the cape working up to this pelt. So we'll get stuck into that and see how we get on. With the black area is now done with our Black Legion. What I've tried to do is take any, like do it in one coat and then a second coat to just try and um, accentuate the shadows a little bit. So taking it basically neat from the pot and going into the recesses, I think it's done a little bit of work, but it's not done a lot. Now, obviously you want to go in there with a, maybe a lighter uh, color, like an incredibly dark gray and start working up some highlights, but we're, we're going to be okay for now as is. <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do is his armor. He doesn't have a lot of it, um, but we're going to use Balthazar gold for that. So let's just pop our lid and get some out onto the table. This stuff hasn't seen the light of day properly in a while, so it, it always settles really weird in the pot. So the armor is just these two little bits here on the chest. So it's just gonna be a case of... With the bronze down, I've also included work on the sword, on his crown as well, and there's a little bit on the scabbard there for his blade. We're going to move on to the skin and for the skin for the base coat at least 
we're going Ishtar Pink from Scale 75. So I've not actually used this paint before. It's um, It was brand new in the bottle there. So uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. But I have used the Scale stuff before uh, in some other tutorials. But let's see. With the skin now down, or at least the base coat, we can move on to some leather. And for the leather, we're going to use Sigor Brown, another contrast paint. So yet again, we're going to take a little bit of it and put it on the palette. And what I'm going to do here, or at least attempt to do, is to use it basically neat on the likes of the boots and the cuffs. Um, and when we come to the sword scabbard, yeah, that as well. But when we come to this pelt, because I want to use as little variety of colours as possible, we're going to thin it a little bit and let it work a little bit more into all the recesses. But at the minute, what we're going to do is run it fairly neat over most of the leather work. So with our leather and our browns done, you can see the difference between the, the coloration on his boots and his cuffs compared to the pelt. And that really is just adding a little bit, or just making the paint a little bit thinner when applying it. It also helps that the pelt has some fantastic texture on it. Really lets the uh, contrast paint do a lot of work. Now we're going to move on to the sword. And for the sword, we're going to be using just plain old lead belcher for our initial coat. And again, this isn't really going to take very long. But what we are going to do is once this is done, we're going to let everything dry. Probably leave it for about half an hour or so. And then after that, we're going to look at shading our model down. With uh, the base coating now down and dry, we can work on shading our fella down a little bit. And for this, we're going to use a contrast paint. We're going to use Garg... <laughs> This one. So <laughs> we're going to use this. Uh, we're going to thin it a little bit. And the reason I'm using this paint is because I want him to look a little more um, gritty, a little more grungy uh, than typically would be. Like if I used my, um, if I used the AK wash or something like that, I'd probably get a similar effect but I don't necessarily want to keep just falling back on this, the same old stuff every time. So we're going to thin this sewer down a little bit and then just coat the whole bottle, face and everything, because we're going to, we're going to come back and uh, tidy it all up and do a little bit of highlighting. So here we go. And we're just going to give the entire model a coat of this and let the contrast paint effect do what it does best and sink into those recesses and hopefully give us a nice little bit of shading. So with our contrast paint, our glasur all dry, we now have a heavy looking dark fella. So a little bit too dark, but it's okay. So we're going to work on that in a minute. What I want to do now is work on his hair. And for his hair, we're going to base coat it on top of the gray sear with Deepkin Flesh. This is going to be an odd looking color to start with, but I think it's going to work for us. So we're going to dip our brush into some water and put some onto our palette. A little bit more than that. And then just a case of just base coating the hair in. While the base coat on the hair is drying, we're returning to our corn red. And for this, we're just going to start to block out a little bit of brighter patches on his clothing. So just as a bit of a tidy and a bit of highlight as well. With the red done, just bringing up that contrast a little bit, we're going to do the same on the black using Vallejo Black Grey. So again, we're going to take our brush, dip it in some water, pull a little bit of paint out, check our consistency, make sure that's all right. And then we're going to, as with the red, pick out a few areas on the black cloth just to raise 
that coloring up a little bit. So with the black touched up a little bit, not really much to do there. I didn't want to play with it too much, uh, just to do a little bit. We're going to return to the hair, and now it's going to get contrast paint apothecary white, and that's going to tone it in a little bit. So we'll just take some of that in the pot. Make sure that's okay. With the apothecary white down on the hair and that drying, we're going to move on to some liberator gold and we're going to use that to highlight his armor up a little bit. So it's going to be quite subtle, I think. I don't think we need to go completely over the top with it. With the gold sorted out, we're going to return to our lead belcher. And for this, it's just on the sword blade we're going to be looking at. So I'm wanting the paint to be a bit thinner, just to focus on cleaning the blade up a little bit. So, okay, so a little bit more of a shiny sword. We're now more or less done. Uh, a couple more things to do. So we're going to take some, let me see if I can shake the pot up first. We're going to take some grey sear and very quickly add a little bit of that to some of the edges on his hair just to um, tone and define a little bit more. So we have that, and then we're going to revisit the skin one last time as well. I think the skin paint is still damp on my palette, it is. So all we're going to do with that is just use it to define the shape of his face a little bit more. So not much to do here, just little bits. bridge of the nose, that cheekbone, a little bit down on the chin, just shows them off a little bit more. So what I'm going to do now, just clean this off. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of blood for the blood god and we're just going to use that because it's a nice vivid kind of arterial red. We're just going to use that to touch in the gem. So here we have Marseille now finished. Uh, what I did was um, gave him a coat of matte varnish and then went back over the two gems, the one on the crown, the one on the chest with Blood for the Blood God just to bring that gloss back up again. But I feel that the varnish really has given us a nice complete finish and all the little bits of highlighting work and little bits of touch up here and there have worked rather well to give us a good looking miniature that is going to stand out on the tabletop even though he's quite drab that's what kind of why i went with the uh the white grayish sort of hair makes him stand out a little bit more and uh yeah i think in general we have a pretty good model uh definitely a little bit better than my usual work and um hopefully i'm going to continue with that but it depends on what the model is and you know how prominent it's going to be on the tabletop i think uh, our vampire, not vampire guy who's supposed to be dead but not really, uh, is going to stand out rather well. So, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Put your comments down below, and until next time, take care, stay safe, and see you again very soon. This week, you could win one of three bundles for the Silver Bayonet. Winners will be chosen from OnTabletop.com, YouTube, and the Cop of Games members. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now, and while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong.
Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.